Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, let's focus on relational algebra division operation. We are now in the additional operations of relational algebra operation series and we are now focusing on the division operation. At first, we will understand what is this division operation. This division operation is basically represented as this divided by symbol or by this symbol. In this lecture series, I will be denoting it with this symbol. However, there are some conventions which also uses this symbol. Whatsoever, the concept remains the same. The first question is, why do we need division operation? Basically, when we have some queries or output that we require, which involves the all or every concept. I mean to say, this division operation is used for queries which involve the all or every circumstance. Anyway, let's not focus more on this now. When we see some example, it will be clear for you. But in this presentation, we are going to understand the basics only. So what we are going to do is, we are going to perform division among two relations. Let's take R1 and R2 as two relations. So what I'm going to perform here is R1 divided by R2. In simple terms, R1 by R2. What do you mean by this? It means the tuples of R1. I mean the tuples of R1 is associated with all tuples of R2. It means all tuples of R2. The output of R1 divided by R2 is the tuples of R1 is associated with all tuples of R2. Just recollect this word, all. Anyway, when we see examples, it will be clear for you to understand. Is there any rule or condition that when R1 divided by R2 is possible? If you observe, the output is going to be like this, right? The tuples of R1 is going to be associated with all tuples of R2 is the output when we perform R1 divided by R2. R1 divided by R2 is not always possible. Even in regular mathematics, R1 divided by R2 will not be always possible. What if the denominator is zero? We get infinity, isn't it? So obviously there will be some conditions for R1 divided by R2 to be possible. When it is possible, R1 divided by R2 is possible if and only if R2 is a proper subset of R1. Just remember, if I am going to do R1 divided by R2, it means this R2 should be a proper subset of R1. That is this. What is a proper subset? R2 is a proper subset of R1 only when these two conditions are satisfied. Where R1 and R2 are different, they are not one and the same. And the important is every attribute of R2 should be present in R1. Remember, if we are going to do R1 divided by R2, R2 and R1 should not be one and the same. And every attribute of R2 should appear in R1. Only then, the tuples of R1 will be associated with all tuples of R2 as the output when we perform R1 divided by R2. I know you will be able to understand this explanation, but still you wanted more explanation. No worries. Let's see an example, then it will be even more clear for you to understand. Let's see the example now. I'm going to just perform student divided by course. Remember, this is a generic way of performing the division operation. However, in reality or in the database level, when we apply some queries, the scenario gets changed. But my intention in this lecture presentation is that to make you understand the basics. So what we are going to perform is student divided by course. Simply R1 divided by R2. When it will be possible to perform student divided by course? When course and student are different relations and Every attribute of course should be present in student. Only then this is possible. Let's see that now. So we are going to have two relations. Let's take the student relation, which has two attributes, student name and course name, where students have enrolled in some courses. This is about the student relation. What about the course relation? In this course relation, I have only one attribute, which is course name, which contains DBMS, data structures and computer networks. Now, let's apply the rule. Is student and course not equal to? Definitely, there are two attributes in the student relation and there is only one attribute in the course relation. So definitely, student is not equal to course. Hence, the first condition is satisfied. What about the second condition? 
it is possible to perform student divided by course only if this course is a proper subset of student every attribute of this course dbms ds cn should appear in the student relation let's see yes dbms is there ds is there cn is there obviously so these two conditions are satisfied hence we can perform student divided by course now what will be the output of this let's assume this is r1 and let's assume this is r2 what i am going to perform is simply r1 divided by r2 what will be there in the output the output will contain only student name it's just like student name course name divided by course name so when we do the division we get the list of all students who have enrolled in all the courses can you recollect that word that i told in the previous slide all or every right so what we are going to find here is finding the list of all students who have enrolled in all courses and the output is going to be tom and amy this is the output of r1 divided by r2 how let's see this dbms tom is enrolled for dbms ds tom is enrolled for ds cn tom is enrolled for cn so tom has enrolled for all these courses in the course relation so tom's name will be there in the output coming to the next one john let's see why john's name is not appearing in the output john has enrolled for ds yes ds is there John has enrolled for DBMS. Yes, he has enrolled for DBMS. John's name will appear in the output only if he has also enrolled for CN. John has not enrolled for CN, and that is why John's name is not appearing in the output. Let's see about Amy. Amy has enrolled for CN, DBMS, and data structure DS. So all these three values are appearing in the course relation. and hence amy's name will be there in the output meaning that amy has enrolled all the courses john has not enrolled all the courses tom has enrolled for all the courses and that is why there is a mandatory condition that course should be a proper subset of student for what for student divided by course to be possible and that is why we get tom and amy's name in the output but not john I hope it's clear for you. All these values should appear in all tuples or every tuple in the student relation. I hope things are clear to you now. Let's see homework question. In this homework question, I'm going to take the same student and the course relation. In the previous example, I performed R1 divided by R2. I mean student divided by course. But what I am going to ask you to do is to verify this. The question is is course divided by student possible if not possible answer in the comment section why is it so so just draft your answer and post your answer in the comment section telling why course divided by student is not possible if it is possible then share the output and that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching